When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And then the word was made flesh. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding that God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. God's going to speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new, to give me anything that's certain. Longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me, disturb me, shake me to my core. Make me. FOD for the Soul, a bite-sized reflection by the Feast Ortigas District Builders, happening every Monday to Saturday at 10 in the morning. Friends, every 7, 10 in the morning, we have Break Feast, every Monday to Saturday, as we lead you to a short examine for a strong jumpstart to win your day. As we cap off our night, we present to you Late Night Snack, Monday to Saturday, every 10 in the evening as we lead you to another examine to end the day. Friends, Worship Night every Wednesday and Friday at 7.30 in the evening as we go deep for another praise and worship experience. As we come to you as One Feast Ortigas District Family, we invite you to our Feast at Home. This is a collaboration of the builders all throughout the district. Schedules are available on your screen. See you there! As the situation pushes us to stay online, we present to you brand new online offerings. You may visit the following pages flashed on your screen. You can also watch us on YouTube at the World Wide Web. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button for you to be updated on our future contents. To find out more, visit us at www.feastortigasdistrict.com. All of these are possible with the Lord. Through our dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for blessing us with your love and support. Let us continue the cycle of generosity by giving your donations tights, and love offerings through Paymaya or by visiting our website at feastortigasdistrict.com slash give. Thank you so much for your support. Hello, brothers and sisters! Welcome to the feast! Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Now I know we're all excited to declare God's awesomeness God's faithfulness. So now I invite you to get up and worship with us. In the desert, in the darkness, God, you lead me through the night. In the summit, in the wonder, I am guided by your light. You go before my every way. I'm not afraid, so I will say. Oh, wait.
Hello friends, my name is Brother Joel and I would like to welcome you to our special talk for today. We are, we are taking a break from our study of Matthew, from our Miracles and More series, and today we'll have a very special talk. The title of our talk is Everyday Saints. This is also a good way for us to remember during this time our friends in heaven, the saints, and our dearly departed loved ones who are also now in heaven. They are our daily saints who continue to lead us to Jesus. And that is my prayer, that one day when the time comes, we will also join them in celebrating with Jesus. Today, let us talk about discipleship. Discipleship, we say, is bringing somebody closer to Jesus, to journey with someone to a relationship with God. Do you believe that God is calling you to disciple? If you are, then join us today. Be blessed by God's word. And perhaps as this day, after this day, you can respond to God's call to make disciples. Don't forget to start your own watch parties, to tag your friends, and then to invite them with you to join you as we bring to you the message of God here in our feast at home. Let us begin by declaring God's words as he say that we are his powerful champion. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's words so that I would become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Today our reading comes from 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. We have a very short passage today, and allow me to read it to you. 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, and it says, And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. This is the Apostle Paul. Today, we're going to talk about discipleship in the context, in the journey that the Apostle Paul made himself. Today's big message is, in, is, is be faithful because God is faithful. Again, I want to repeat that. Be faithful because God is faithful. This, this is Paul as he speaks to the people of Corinth. As, as, as he encourages them to disciple and to bring the message of God to the people, what is he saying? If we try to go back to, to the passage before, the readings before, before this verse, you will see that he was narrating the experiences of, of the people in the Old Testament when they were journeying, when they had the exodus from, from, from Egypt towards the Promised Land. They encountered a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties along the way. And, and, and he was trying to remind people that as you disciple, you will also meet these challenges. It is not easy. Why, why, is he, why is he saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ? Friends, today let us take a look at Paul and his journey towards responding to that call to make disciples. I, I consider Paul as one of those who faithfully responded to God's call to disciple by bringing to life the epistles of Paul, 13 books in the New Testament that contains his preaching and him bringing the message of God to the Gentiles and today to the world. But, but, but why is Paul asking us to be faithful? 
Why imitate him the way he imitated Jesus? Why? Because he knew that responding to the call to make disciples is not easy. As, as we take a quick glimpse into the life of Paul, it is good to remember that prior to Paul, as a discipler, he was known as Saul of Tarsus, pursuing those who follow Christ. He, he, was, he, he was following, he was killing, he was destroying the early Christians. But through a life-changing experience, he was led to follow Jesus. Good to note as well that Saul wasn't a bad person. He was pursuing the early Christians because he was still blinded by the truth. But his encounter with God opened his eyes to the truth, both literally and figuratively. When, when you read the story of Paul, it, he was blinded by a light from heaven. But after three days, he, he, he again saw, he, his eyes was able to see again. But my question is this, how have you encountered God in your life that will make you respond to the call of discipleship. Can you still remember your first encounter with the Lord? What is your own Jesus encounter? You know what? As I look back into my life, I responded to Jesus and answered this call for discipleship because there were also a lot of people who said yes to bring me closer to Him. My parents, early on, both my nana and my tatai introduced me and my siblings to Jesus. They were my first encounter of who Jesus was to me. They brought us to Mass weekly. They, they taught us how to pray. But more importantly, I saw their devotion and trust in God. They were the first model, my first model in following Jesus. But my, my personal relationship with, with, with God started when I was introduced to the Light of Jesus family. It was actually my older brother who invited me to join the family. It took time before I finally said, said yes. I, I remember him bribing me many times just to come. In the community, I had a group of friends who were also my leaders then in, in the singles ministry who led me not just to become part of the family, but they opened my heart and my mind into serving Jesus through the community. Today, they may not be, no longer be there. They may not be part of the community anymore, some of them. But you know what? They were the ones who planted in my heart those, those seeds of serving God. A, a lot of people from community discipled me to Jesus. My elders, my leaders, but most especially my, my, my support group, my small group. Our, our young couples group, whom I have been with for 14 years already. Imagine that, ano, 14 years na kami magkakasama. When, when, we, when we got married, most of us we were just married just around that time. And then they, they are not just a support group to me, but they continue to be an experience, an actual experience of Jesus to me and my family. Through them, I'm also able to say yes to follow Jesus, to, to journey with people so that we can be closer with, to God. This, this is what discipleship is all about. Journeying with people that leads you to follow Christ. Brother Vic and Sis Ditas and our light group, we've been together for almost a decade already. You know, in, in, our, in our young couples light group, we, we are couples who are, back then we were starting our families, just got married. We have the same situation and we see Jesus in our similar situation. On the other hand, with, with Brother Vic, Sis Ditas and our uh, Cop, uh, senior couple LGs, they, they were ahead of us, ahead in years. And then they modeled Jesus to us. How? On how we can raise our family. Why, why, why am I sharing this? Because I am a follower of Jesus and a disciple of Jesus. Why? Because at one point, one point in my life, at one time in my life, there were people who said yes to Jesus to bring me closer to him. Just like Saul, who once said yes to follow Jesus. Friends, you are called for a divine purpose. We are all called for a divine purpose. It's not easy. Yes, in fact, you will see that in the journey of Paul himself, he encountered a lot of trials, a lot of difficulties. He was imprisoned. He suffered a shipwreck. He was beaten, stoned. He suffered cold, thirst, hunger just to follow Jesus and to make disciples. In fact, in Acts 9, 15 to 16, allow me to read this to you. But the Lord said, go for soul in 
Go for a soul is my chosen instrument to make my message to the Gentiles and to the kings as well as to the people of Israel. And, and listen to this. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. To end this part, I, I was talking to a co-servant at the feast. He is one of our leaders. His heart is really for discipleship. He was sharing with me that during this time, his frustrations, discipling today, reaching out and connecting to people, to our attendees, to our fellow servants here at the feast. And I can feel his frustrations. And to be honest, there are days, there are times, uh, I think a lot perhaps, <laughs> that, that I share his sentiments. Many number of times that he has been seen so, dead ma, walang pakailan. Sabi niya, ba't parang ayaw nilang magpa-reach out, ayaw nilang magpa-connect. But you know what I told him? That's okay. It's okay to feel that way. But we cannot give up. Not today. Why? Because out there, more than ever, we are called to make disciples. There are a lot of people that need Jesus. And these times more than ever, we need to carry the light of Jesus to bring it to people. Discipleship is journeying with people. More so in these times of pandemic, in these times of crisis, we are called to disciple and bring God's message to, 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 to people that we meet. Friends, again, it's not an easy journey. But let us be faithful. We are called by God to be faithful. The same way that Paul suffered hardships. The same way that Jesus endured the cross. But, but God was faithful to them. Jesus is risen. We have been saved. And as you respond to the call of discipleship, God wants to tell you, be faithful. Why? Because God is faithful. He is with you and he will see you through. To continue our message today, allow me to call on Brother Jerome DeLeo. Thank you, Brother Joel. Well, that was an inspiring talk. And uh, today I'd like to pick up where, where Brother Joel left off. And uh, we're going to be talking much of people that has been serving us despite this pandemic. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the life of Timothy, who's been blessing Ephesus. So are you ready to be blessed? It's Brother Jerome. Are you ready to be blessed? Please type amen if you're ready to be blessed because I'm just excited to share with you this powerful passage that we have that was taken from Timothy. But before I, I read the passage, I just want to let you know that Paul was mentoring his young supporter, Timothy. So according to, to 1 Timothy, Chapter 4, verse 12, the Word of God says, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Say this to me, young. How many of you are young? Young emotionally, physically, and young at heart. And it says, be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. That was a powerful passage that we have today. Friends, young doesn't only mean age, but also as a new follower of Christ. See, my friend, I remember when Brother Vic Espanol appointed me to be his builder for the Feast Ortigas District Sunday AM session of almost three years ago. That's when I, I, I just arrived from Canada. I was very fortunate to have Brother Olin as my tag preacher. You know why? Because I saw a lot of potential on this young, gifted, committed, and kind-hearted servant leader of God. So one Sunday, right after our service, I invited him for a lunch along with my family. See, my main purpose, my main purpose was to know him more on a personal level. And since then, we became really close amazing person and, and I was while I was mentoring I was able to convince him to attend the school of leadership to prepare him for a bigger role in our community and hopefully hopefully one day one day that he will become a fish builder because I think he has all the talent for him to be able to be one so the next thing I did, brothers and sisters, 
was empowered him and his wife, Sister Olive, to leave a light group. And you know what? Today, his light group is actively meeting on a regular basis because of their strong relationship. Strong relationship. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you don't have any light group yet, if you're not part of a light group, I encourage you to join a light group because it will bless you immensely. See, what is amazing with Brother Paul was his great faith for the Lord. During this pandemic, he went through a lot of trials and challenges in life. And it was his faith and trust with the Lord that kept him, kept him going, you know, despite all these challenges in his, in, his, in his life. See, one of the challenges that he actually encountered when he lost his aunt, He's actually his, his, his favorite aunt. He's very close. This aunt of, of his, I think his name is, uh, her name is Sister, Sister Terry Chua, very close to, to, uh, to, to Olin, Brother Olin, because when they were growing up, when they were financially struggling, it was her who pretty much helped them out. So imagine he really loved this, this aunt, and, and, and she died. And what is, what, is, uh, what is really painful on his end, because of the, the pandemic, you know, they weren't able to really grieve and, and mourn properly. So he, he, he felt bad about it. And another challenge that he, that he had during this pandemic was his hours at work were shortened. He used to work for about 26 days a month. And then because of the pandemic, because, because uh, the company that he works for is, is not really dealing with essential stuff, his hours was shortened from 26 days to 10 days. Imagine the financial impact in his, in his, in his, uh, with, with this uh, challenges, you know? So he, he, he had really challenges, but despite of the financial constraint, despite of the financial constraint, Brother Allen was still able to give his regular tithes. Because you know why? He truly believed in his heart. He truly believed in his heart that God provides. Can you just tell the person next to you that God provides? If you believe that God provides, I want you to type amen. Please type amen if you truly believe that God provides. And true enough, true enough, even the pandemic crisis, Brother Allen and his family were able to move to their new homes. See, that's another That's another challenges that uh, he was facing he was he was he was so scared that because of the pandemic that he won't be able to to move to his new house he just bought a new house and that's the one thing that he was having struggles with was will he be able to move out move to this new house but what is amazing god never stopped blessing his family because of the the heart that he has the heart to serve god See, my friends, Brother Olin, with his big heart, was able to inspire a lot of people around him. He was able to inspire people, his co-workers, who are struggling emotionally, physically, and spiritually because of this pandemic. He was able to give them inspiration despite of that. He was able to inspire his core group who was having some challenges, emotional challenges. See, my friends, when you serve with all your heart, God will take care of you. When St. Paul empowered Timothy to take charge of the church in Ephesus, the young disciple became a leader. He became a leader. The reason that he became a leader is because he was a great follower. He was, he was willing to be mentored by Paul. And that's what happened. And you know what today? St. Timothy, a martyr and a fine bishop of Ephesus, the young disciple that became a bishop, because of his because of his love for God. And sometimes, my friends, all it takes, all it takes is for one person to believe in you. For one person to believe in you. Just like me. Despite of my dark past. Remember what I shared last Sunday? I had a dark past. I, I was a horrible person. But you know what? Because of Brother Pio. Who believe in me 
led me to conversion. And now, Brother Vic is here to, to encourage you more and more to be to become a leader. So, my friends, in your life, you will meet, you will have Saint Paul. You probably want you you will meet a Timothy in your life. That you will be able to encourage, you. my friends. We won't be able to share God's word. We won't be able to build God's kingdom without others helping us. So. When you, find, when you find someone like a Timothy in your life, I encourage your brothers and sisters to, to encourage them, to empower them, so that they will be able to serve God the way you do. You know, when I actually start serving the Lord, just like Brother Olin, my life was never the same. It changed my life significantly. I'm grateful to serve an awesome God who will never fail. So I encourage your brothers and sisters to do the same. I encourage you in this time of pandemic, don't lose hope. Because I believe that God is using you. God is using you immensely. And I pray that God will continue to bless you and use you powerfully to touch other people the way God has touched me, the way God has touched Brother Allen and God, the way that God has touched each and every one of us who is serving God to the fullest. So right now, I would like to turn this on to Brother J. Paul to continue and finish this wonderful special talk that we have for today. God bless you. See you again. Hi, everyone. My name is Brother J. Paul Hernandez, and I want to really thank you for staying here. Thank you, my dear brother builders, for sharing this our stories for you know, November 1. Um, everyday saints and I want to read to you um, a story when when Saint Peter was about to die it's from second Corinthians chapter 2 sec, sorry second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 to 8 and says but you should keep a clear mind in every situation don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you as for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to, this, to his appearing. My dear friends, St. Paul served until his last breath. And of course, I would want to invite servants who have served until their last breath. But I can't because they're not here anymore. So, <laughs> but I invited friends of our servants who, you know, they have touched. So let me call on Sister Marie's, Sister Mean, and Sister Evelyn with me here on this. Interview. Hello, dear Paul. Hi, my dear beautiful Hi. sisters. Hello. <laughs> good, good. Good. Very good. Um, good. And, um see, Maren po tayo, we, we wanna this moment for those who are watching and listening to this, we wanna honor servants, um, three servants. Marami po tayong servants, but we chose three servants today that you want to honor and just you honor with the the story and messages of our dear beloved co servant and friends. So we were honoring Sister Elsa Tabius, um, Sister Eloisa, and Brother June uh, Maceda. Um, sister, to my dear sisters, you wanna um, start, and anyone can start. But my first question is, how has these people personally touched you, or how was these people? been Jesus to you and touch you throughout their life. Okay. Sige, mauna na ako, no? Seniority. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ito, di ba? <laughs> oh, ako pinakabata, eh. Oh, <laughs> Alright. Sige, okay. sige, girl. I will uh, like to talk about Elsa, no? Kasi I met Elsa uh, way back in the 90s when uh, she was still working in a computer shop. And uh, even before that, she was already attending and serving in Tarlac, no, in their community in Tarlac. So I met her in this computer shop because the owner of the shop, uh, gusto niya merong prayer meeting sa kanilang, uh, sa kanilang office. 
So we were the ones who were assigned to to um, to serve in their computer shop. So bagong graduate palang si Elsa that time, no, in her mm. early twenties. Uh, then, uh, kasi siya yung naging coordinator that time doon sa shop. Be, one of the youngest, but she yung naging coordinator doon. And through the years, she yon. So for many years, we were serving in their computer shop. At uh, talagang walang minti, she was always there, always smiling. Yun yung gusto ko kay Elsa. Eh. She was always smiling. Kahit na may pinagdaraanan yun, no? uh, she has the responsibility to, 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 to provide for their family. Pero malaking nakasmile lang yan. Masaya, ma- nagkukwentuhan kami. And nakita ko yung faithfulness niya, yung commitment niya. Uh, even when she was already serving sa ating Feast Ortigas as a part of the music ministry, uh, talagang she will really take time to practice, no? Hindi siya magsaserve na walang practice kasi requirements sa atin, ano? She was, she was always there, ready to give her time to practice and give her excellence in her service. Kaya wow. hanggang, yeah, even, even on her last days, talaga, uh, she was there. Nung bumisita kami sa kanya actually, no? Twice, twice we visited her sa Tarlac when she was already home uh, to, to, to rest, no? Um, worship pa rin nag-worship pa rin kami uh, yung halos 24-7 yung kanyang music no? We're really worshiping God so hindi lang siya nag-worship pag nasa stage pero even in her own home in her bed no, where she was uh, really ano na, weak worship pa rin Kaya doon ko nakita na talagang buhay niya is worship no Grabe. hindi lang the stage but the, her whole life was really worshiping and praising yeah. god that that's how i want to honor our our sister elsa wow thank you sister may and um, sister marie you want to go next and that's sister yes. Evelyn. all right uh, ako naman si ati eloisa i meet ati eloisa sa feast natin sa ortigas way back 2013 no nung nagjoin siya so Nakita ko siya na very warm, sa, nag-serve siya sa atin sa so warm ministry. Ang nakita ko sa kanya yung smile niya, yung service niya kay Lord. Yun yung, yun yung nakita ko. And at, and at the very, actually nung towards end, nung malaman ko na mayroon siyang, ano nga, mayroon siyang suffering or sakit, doon ko lalo siyang na-admire kasi uh, napaka, hindi mo, hindi mo akalain na uh, siya ay may, may, may dinadala. Hindi mo akalain na may dinadala siyang pain or suffering in her life. So, yun yung nakita ko sa kanya, yung, yung dedication niya, yung service niya. Na, hindi, na, kahit na may pain siyang dinadala, pero never mo makita sa mukha niya na in suffering siya. Yung, kasi, di ba, warm, welcoming, di ba? Kailangan, kailangan talaga face. Eh, paano ka makakasmile kaya ng you're in pain? Diba? So yun yung yun yung nakita ko kay Ate Eloisa kaya I admire her a lot. O pag yung sa pagiging sa pagiging dedicated niya and yung committed niya to really serve God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you po Sister Marie. So beautiful. Um kayo po Sister Evelyn kay Brother June. Ay o oh, si Brother June kasama ko siya sa isang community but I was the one who invited him to the feast. Introduced ko siya sa feast PICC. And from the day one na na-invite ko siya sa feast, ay hindi na siya nag-stop uh, attending the regular uh, feast Sunday until nag-move kami sa feast Ortigas. So ito si Brother June, doon po nakita yung kanyang dedication. Yung para bang lahat ng tao gusto niyang dalhin sa Diyos. Lahat ng hmm. mamit niya, gusto niya akayin niya kay Lord. So that is the 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 inviting power uh, how he, how encourage how encourage people to go to to the feast and other activities of the light of jesus napaka visible niya in all the activities of uh, the feast kcon seminars at pati sa light sa pastoral care talagang very visible siya so up to the time na in, ako naman yung in-invite niya sa Peace Inarawan. Nag-organize siya doon ng light peace video with a thousand members. 
talagang he is a good leader and organizer. Na organize niya yung feast na yun with the supervision of Brother Joel. At na tatandaan ko, we were uh, jumping from one event to another. The whole day of a Sunday will be one in one of our community, then Feast Ortigas, then Feast in Arawan. And so uh, we were grateful in our senior days, eh, meron kaming lakas na gawin yung sa maghapon. So siguro kung merong ano, yung tandem in crime, kami ni Brother John yung tandem in Christ. <laughs> So, napaka-visible namin dalawa and, mm-hmm. at na-encourage niya ako doon. Nakita ko talaga yung passion niya, yung dedication niya up to the last moment. Kasi, nung naging online na yung ating mga services, si Brother June, ang kanyang cellphone, yung obsolete type na na yung clip pa. So, pero nung kinakailangan niya mag, matuto ng, ng gadget, hindi siya techie eh. So talagang nag, ano siya, pinag-aralan niya yung cellphone to be updated sa mga seminars, sa mga online service natin. So yun ang ginawa niya. At in the midst of the pandemic, nandung pa rin siya, dumadayo pa rin siya, namimigay ng ayuda with all the Bibles na pinamimigay din niya. Kaya... Up to the last moment na nasa hospital siya, na tumatawag siya, the faith in prayers na doon kay Brother June. So tatawag siya, kahit hirap na hirap na siyang huminga. Sister yeah. Ellen, mag-pray tayo, ipag-pray natin na hindi na ako lalagyan ng tubo, na yung swab test ko ay maging okay. Up to the last minute, nandun yung ano niya sa prayer at wow. yung pag-iintindi niya sa community. So, doon po nakita si Brother June na, na talagang in-offer niya yung life niya in hard times and last time. Talagang wow. yun ang ginawa ni Brother June, serving the Lord. Wow. Kaya nga nung na, nawala siya, na, na, namatay siya because of COVID. Mm. And uh, talagang hing, nakita ko yung papapano siya mag-serve the Lord. And I was inspired for that. Amen. Yun lang, thank you. <laughs> thank you po mga sisters. Alam nyo po nakaka-bless. Um, ako po personally, uh, si Brother June na meet ko once and nakaka-inspire yung nagawa niyang feast light. Um, and yes. talagang para sa mga may hirap, di ba, or sa mga dami naming taong na-bless. Um, mm-hmm. Si Sister Eloisa na meet ko rin, I think once or twice. And then yeah. si Sister Elsa naka-serve ko sa Feast Ortigas. And, yeah. and these are people that we we okay. miss. Ang, ang, ang sakit kasi wala na sila. But you know, we pray that they are with God. Yeah. They're already praying for us on heaven. Um, yeah. Mga sisters, kilalo ko po kayong tatlo na sa hirap din ng buhay, never kayong nag-stop mag-serve. Um, kayo po, before before we, mabilis ng oras, before we, we end, <laughs> Ano po yung advice nyo sa mga feasters na namatayan, na nawawala na ng pag-asa, na ayaw na mag-serve, or lumalayo kay Lord? Uh, so based on your experience and learning nyo sa mga ating brothers and sister na, na si Sister Elsa, Sister Eloisa, and Brother June. Um, Sister Mean, you wanna start with, with your advice? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> sa pagsuserve ano minsan talaga minsan dumarating sa pan- uh, sa buhay natin na parang napapagod ka rin ano kasi physically no pag tiring yan ako sa experience ko kasi kailangan lang pahinga no pahinga ka no uh, pagkatapos noon ire-recharge ka ni Lord eh para yeah. naalala ko din si Elijah hindi ba katatapos lang niya ng laban doon sa mga mga priest or ano nung mga nila Jezebel and King Ahaz na, na ano eh, pinagpahinga lang siya ni Lord, no? Kain ka, tulog ka, kain ka, tulog ka. So may time na kailangan lang tayo mag no? We give that ourselves yung time na yon And then, hayaan mo, palalakasin ka ulit ni Lord. Kasi ako, ang, ang uh, through the years, siguro how many years have I been serving the light of Jesus, uh, talagang hindi ka na babalik sa hindi pag-serve eh. Dahil ang service, parang expression yan ng pasasalamat sa ginawa ni Lord sa buhay mo. 
there's no other way but to love Him back through serving God. So kung talagang naramdaman natin yung pagmamahal ni Lord, yung ginawa niyang lahat para sa atin, yun na lang, konting bagay na pwede natin gawin talaga kay, kay Lord talaga is to really serve Him. Naalala ko rin yung, yung woman no, na, na, na uh, hinugasan yung paa ni Jesus with her tears, inanuhan ng, ng precious uh, perfume. Sabi nga ni Jesus, eh, she loved much because she has been forgiven much. So tayo, kung damang-dama talaga natin in love ni Lord, talagang naturally ang expression natin is to love and serve God back. Kaya mga servants, kung hindi pa tayo talagang sold na sold mag-serve, hayaan natin buksan ang ating sarili to receive that God, the love of God. At pag natanggap natin yon, wala nang pipigil sa atin magsilbi sa Panginoon. Thank you. Thank you. Sis Maris? Yes. Kagaya, kagaya ng sinabi ni Auntie May Aunt, pag uh, ikaw ay nagsiserve or napapagod na, pahinga lang. Talaga kailangan. So, take, take time to re- rest. Uh, then pray and then reflect and then sa pagre-reflect sa pagpo-pray mo God will give you that strength again to carry on to to do the task that God entrusted to you so yun lang po pray and rest and pray and reflect and ibabalik at ibabalik ka ni Lord kapag nandiyan yung puso mo talaga to 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 serve kasi sabi niya nga, sabi nga ni Ate May Ann, yung pag-serve din natin is pasasalamat talaga natin kay Lord sa araw-araw na binibigayang blessing na binibigay niya sa atin. So, through, through that service, through that pag-serve kay Lord, yun yung pagmamahal na ibinabalik natin sa Kanya. Amen. 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 Kaya Sister Evelyn. Yes, uh, from from the two, I, I could gather na yung simple word is recharge. Yun nga, after nakarest tayo, so we are recharged. Sa akin nga, dahil nga sa nakita ko kay Brother June na time was short. Gusto pa niya mag-serve eh, pero wala na. <laughs> e, lalo na sa akin, na sa senior years na ako. So I take time to rest. Then, talaga yung siguro yung heart ko, uh, sabi ko nga, yung mga ang time ay napaka short at yung pagse-serve natin kay Lord uh, parang ayaw ko ng panghinaya ayaw ko nang sayangin pa yung mga nalalabing oras siguro mas nakaka-bless nga yung mga younger ones yun na nagse-serve na kay Lord so uh, use your life in serving the Lord yun nga ang sabi nga in serving you are uh, uh, praising and honoring at yung ating gratefulness na papakita natin sa pag-serve natin sa kanya. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I really want to honor you also, my dear sisters. Uh, I, I believe that Jesus is with you and and that you have been touched. And, and thank you po. Kasi kayo po mismo. Sa dami na po nagawa niyo for the Lord, pwede na kayong mag-relax. <laughs> but still you are serving and I believe knowing the three of you having learned kung uli po ako feast builder kung hindi ko ako na-touch ng mga buhay nyo I believe that yung 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 mga sacrifice nyo yung pag-serve nyo somehow spiritually has touched me as well ganun naman tayo sa pagiging katoliko and I know you uh, my dear sisters that even until your dying breath that you will serve and that's the message we want to share to our our participants today. So, thank Amen. you so much for being Jesus. Um, wala po ito sa script, pero um, Sister Mayan, can you just uh, pray? Pray for the departed and pray for the mga namatayan because for those, maybe a lot of the new ones don't know you, Sister Mayan. I, ako, I just want to say, kayo, you have really been an inspiration or an instrument of how, of my spiritual life. I, I have grown closer to God through you and and just being being seeing you in in the ministry throughout the years and and everyone here thank you my dear sisters um for being a blessing sister man um can we can we close this interview by praying amen, amen. praise god salamat sa panginoon sa ngala ng ama ng anak at ng espiritu santo amen oh lord maraming maraming salamat po lord god sa biyaya ng buhay yes, thank you lord god na ito itong buhay na ibinigay niyo po sa amin ito Malaking regalo. It's a gift from you, Lord God. And sana, Lord God, itong gift, 
no uh, gamitin po namin ng maayos ng mahusay Panginoon upang hindi po to masayang upang ma- magawa po namin yung pinaka best po namin sa buhay na ibinigay niyo po sa amin and father we pray sa mga taong na una na po sa amin we pray lord god na i-bless niyo po ang kanila mga kaluluwa na why uh, sa, sa sa panahon na narito po sila pinagsilbihan niya nila kayo lord we pray na matanggap po nila yung kanilang reward sa sa inyong kaharian and Panginoon sa amin na naririto ngayon, Lord God, uh, may mga may mga kamag-anak, kaibigan, kapamilya na na lumisa na rin po Panginoon sa aming buhay. We pray Lord God that you give comfort sa bawat isa sa amin Panginoon na nalulungkot, nangungulila sa sa pag, pagkawala ng aming mga mahal sa buhay. We pray oh God na na makita po namin yung yung malaking dahilan kung bakit uh, ang ibang tao ay nauuna sa amin and lord maging inspiration po ito maging maging enlightenment po ito sa amin na na bilangin po namin ang aming oras dito panginoon na hindi nga kami mabubuhay habang panahon dito sa lupa kaya kung ano pong pwede namin gawin ngayon ay gawin na po namin panginoon upang wala po kaming pagsisihan pagdating ng panahon na kami ay haharap na po sa inyo and we pray na tulungan niyo po kami to live holy lives yes, uh, blameless lord god so that we will we will be worthy to come into your kingdom this we pray in jesus name amen amen, amen. amen. in the name of the father amen. and son of the holy spirit amen amen, amen. Thank you so much sister Mean sister Marie and sister Evelyn alam niyo na bless po ako and 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 i wish we had more time <laughs> And thank you so much. And I'll see you. I can't wait to embrace you. I can't wait to embrace mm-hmm. you after this pandemic. Please, God bless you and be safe. God's favor upon you. Thank you so much. And we'll give the mic to Brother Anthony Rodriguez. Great day, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Anthony Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you so much, my brother builders, and to our sisters who shared the the life and the passion of our brothers and sisters who have gone ahead of us, who, who gave us a... Um, a glimpse of how it is to serve uh, even in your dying times on your end times so my question before is how is it humanly possible to still serve even when you are suffering or dying just like our brothers and sisters who have gone ahead of us i came across the term redemptive suffering i don't know if you've heard of it already redemptive suffering is the catholic belief that human suffering when accepted and offered up in union with the passion of jesus it can remit the just punishment for one's sins or for the sins of another or for the other physical or spiritual needs of oneself or another the word redeem means to rescue it means to set free it means to ransom and to pay the penalty incurred by another and we often lose sight of the definition to set free and we miss the power of our example as christians as catholics to do exactly that to set our neighbor free by the things that we do by the examples that we we say we we live out our life and brothers and sisters we must look at this aspect of redemptive uh, suffering if we are to understand its role in our daily lives. Because this is one term that we don't normally hear, we don't normally understand, and but it's part of our daily lives. Saint Paul uh, said to the Corinthians, it's in chapter two of the uh, the second book of Corinthians, chapter one, verse five and six. Saint Paul said, "Indeed, as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us." So through Christ does our consolation overflow. When we are made to suffer, it is for our consolation and salvation. Ang galing, no? St. Paul was saying that pag naghihirap tayo, when you go through difficulty, when you go through suffering, it's also for us. It's for our consolation. It's for our salvation. It may look difficult. It might sound like, Talaga ba? Kahit nahihirapan ako, okay pa din yun? <laughs> Parang sadista naman yata. <laughs> no. no. Because if we look at it closely, redemptive, redemptive suffering is all about love. Yes, it's all about love. When we say we offer it up for others, whatever we are going through, it's because 
of love. You offer it up for them because you love them. You you want them to to experience love also. And as followers of Christ, our mission is to bring God's love to people. Yes, to bring God's love to people, to every person that you meet, to people that are closest to you. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, have you ever read or have someone already shared to you the book, Love Someone Today? Yan, ito. Plaging, ano? <laughs> Love Someone Today. Nabasa niyo na ba to? Or kung nabasa mo naman, na-share mo na ba sa ibang tao to? If you know, if you want to know how it is to really love people, how it is to disciple people, how it is to to bring them closer to God, then brothers and sisters, this is one book that I encourage you to read. And if you have already read this, or if someone read it with you, journeyed with you, and learned and shared about God's love through this book, I encourage you to use the book also to share to other people. You read it with them, journey with them. The same way if it has touched your lives, don't allow it to be a cover, a display <laughs> in, in your library, in your home, in your table, somewhere else. But allow it to be a way of touching other people's lives. Yeah, and if you have this, please share it to other people. Ang tanong ko isa pa is, do you regularly attend your light group? If you are part of a light group, do you regularly attend na na napapansin mo ba na pinaghahandaan niya ng ng head mo ng ng leader ng light group niyo hindi yun basta pumitik lang sa eto na yun pinaghahandaan niya yun para pinagpe-pray niya yun para lang ma-share sa atin lahat kung aning message ni God aning word ni God for all of us so do you regularly attend do you grow in your light group and if you are do you share also to other people i think that's what love is sharing and the same time itong video ngayon that you're watching If you have been inspired, if you have been touched, do you share it to your friends? Na realize you ba na oftentimes we have so many excuses na, bro, ang hirap mag-serve eh. Yung time, yung traffic and everything, all of the excuses were taken away. <laughs> Sana yung work hindi, ano? nandun pa rin yung work. But for some it is a lot, it's a, it is a difficulty. Nag-shift na ng iba because of that. But brothers and sisters, just like this, you can... Also use this to help other people, to share God's love to other people. You can form your own light group, or your, hindi naman light group. You can form your own, uh, invite people, ask them to, to to watch this video with you. You can journey with them, share with them, and experience mo aning the things that touch you the most. And I think that could help you in in your journey. No excuses. If you love the Lord, share it. There are so many things that you can do. Kasi I believe in the term na kapag gusto mo, may paraan. Pag ayaw mo, may dahilan. Yan. Totoo, di ba? If you want to, if you re-experience God's love, you want to share it to other people. And oftentimes, I, I know that it may be challenging to do all these things now. Maybe because of the pandemic. Teka lang bro, ang dami kong iniisip. Hindi ko nga alam kung may trabaho pa ako bukas, may sweldo pa ba akin, all of these things. I know it's difficult to do all of these things now, but as you as you might be going through your own struggles and, and your own sufferings during this pandemic, I want you to remember this, that you are greatly loved. Yeah, you are greatly loved. As we also, as we always pray in our novena to God's love, sabi na, diba? I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world in Jesus' name. That's what we always say. That's what we always proclaim so that whatever we're going through, si Lord naman yung bahala. And brothers and sisters, let us continue to love and serve Him. Even at times that we may not feel blessed or loved, take that time and offer it all up to the Lord because suffering can also be a blessing. Suffering can also be a learning experience for us. Suffering can also be a turning point in our life. Always remember, brothers and sisters, that we need to be faithful. We, we want to be faithful. Let's be faithful. You know why? Because God has always been faithful to us. Never na pumalya si Lord. God never failed in His faithfulness to each and every one of us. I am God's servant. That is something radical to say. 
but at the same time, it's something so hard to live for, especially when you are surrounded or you are used to doing bad things. I am a servant of God, but I'm not perfect. That's why I am holding on to God's faithfulness. That's why I, I serve not because God will love me. I serve because God loves me. And that's my only way to bring back the love He has for me. That's my small little way to bring back His love for me. And so as a servant, I will hold on to that one promise that He will be faithful no matter what. His faithfulness does not mean that we will not have problems anymore, that we will have a, just a peaceful life and, and no stress or anything. But His promise is that He will always be with us. No matter what happened. People who trust in the Lord, who trust on His promise, He will be with them. He will never let you go. And so, if you proclaim Jesus is your Lord, Jesus is your Savior, that you God's servant, no matter how hard that is to live by, to live for. Hold on to that. And let us all proclaim, let's all say, He is our refuge, He is our strength. You will stand with Him, for He reigns above all.
Brothers and sisters, maybe good evening for some, good afternoon, whether it depends wherever you are. I am Brother Juni uh, from Feast, Texas. Um, allow me to share with you uh, what happened recently um, during this pandemic. But let, let me begin uh, my sharing by saying that we have a father who keeps his promises. <clears throat> I was 19 when I experienced God in a personal way. And at that same age, I learned in community the biblical principle of giving back to God, be it time, talent, or treasure. In other words, I learned to tithe uh, while in college, beginning from my small allowance. And when I got married, my wife and I were also regular tithers. When the pandemic started, we experienced hardship in finances. Um, here in our feast, Texas, uh, every 3 o'clock we have Divine Mercy. Every 9 o'clock in the evening we have the Rosary. And I wrote my petition and dropped it in our prayer request book online. My prayer was to be able to sow in time of famine. And I claim uh, prosperity in time of crisis. That's the irony there. Why? We stop giving, my wife and I stop giving to community when all our clients except for one have stopped asking our services. We could not rent our apartment. We, we could not pay mortgage for our car. We could not buy food for the five of us. Then it hit me that I or we have also stopped giving our tithes. I remember the passage in the Bible in, in Malachi um, verses, um, uh, chapter 3 verses 8 to 9. Uh, let me read that to you. It says, should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Ouch. After having realized that my wife and I had cheated on God. Right there and then I told my wife that we need to give back to God what is due him, whether it's a small amount or big. Now this is the magic of God's promise. Nag di decide pa lang kami. The following day, old clients started calling us back and asking our services again. And the amazing thing is, new clients are also seeking our services. Before, we had days when we did not have to work because there were no clients. 
but now our Mondays through Saturdays are full. I shared this story with my co-leaders here in Texas uh, during our monthly meeting and the following week two brothers informed me and shared the same story na decide pa lang sila na magbigay na gagawin nila sundin nila ang ginawa ko they receive also blessings that are unexpected isn't that amazing nakakatuwa right now let's go to verse 10 uh, this is the most uh, um, well known passage when it comes to tithing uh, the command and the promise it says here, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great. Take note, a blessing so great. You won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test now. I don't know with you, but so far, this is the only Bible verse that I know of in the entire Bible. That God is challenging us. God is asking us to, to try Him, to put Him to the test. And we will continue with what His promises. And He says, Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from, the, from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Wow, what a promise, my dear brothers and sisters. So when COVID-19 hit hard last March, we only had $500 to rely on in a month. But now, we could pay all our bills, mortgages, insurance, and all. And our income from $500 it increased to almost, almost $6,000. Yes, God is faithful. He never fails to fulfill His promise of abundance. We just have to obey. Tithing is a declaration that all things, including your life and mine, belong to God. Here in the feast, we seek to put Jesus as Lord, meaning number one. He is number one. Not just in one area of our lives, but in all areas, including our finances. Brothers and sisters, I challenge you to try this principle and put Him to the test in the area of your finances. And you will see that His word is true and trustworthy. May our love for Him grow as we obey His words and experience life in abundance. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day, this special talk that you allowed us to hear, Lord. And as we come before you, Lord God, as we experience your love, your grace, your mercy, Lord God, we want to come before you in prayer. And just thank you for all your love and your grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for, for just reminding us, Father, today that we can serve you with all our hearts and with, without any excuses, Lord God. We just have to learn to love, Lord God. Love unconditionally, Lord God. Without any ifs, no buts, Lord God. But we love you with all our hearts, Lord God. And Lord, as we go through difficulty, trials, and sufferings in our lives, Lord God, allow us to take those times, Lord God, to offer it up to you, Lord God knowing, Lord God, that you suffered more than what we are suffering right now, Lord God. This is just a, just a part of our love for you, Lord God, our being one with you in your sacrifices, in your difficulties, Father. Lord, bless us, Lord God, and allow us to always be faithful to you, Lord God, the same way that you have always been faithful to us, Lord God. Allow us to offer everything, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us today here at Feast at Home. See you again next week. Bye-bye. God bless you all.